Hello everyone. I am Komal Mehta, teaching as an assistant professor in CSC department in St. Andrew Institute of Technology and Management, Gurgaon. Today, I will cover some topics of system analysis and designing. Firstly, as the name suggests, what do you mean by system? So this is the basic concept of this subject. What do you mean by a system? What are the elements? What are their features? And how many types of that system? So let's cover this topic. Initially, a system means an unorganized or an organized relationship among functioning units or components. If the whole unorganized data is converted into an organized form, then a system is appropriate. It is an orderly grouping of interdependent components that is linked together according to a plan to achieve a specific objective. That means I have some objective to cover that, to achieve that topic, I must need so many types of components. Those components, if I am linked each other, then it acts as a system. So all the interdependent components, once linking for specific purpose, then it acts as a system. Here you can see these all are the components to make a single system. Firstly, what do you mean by input? Anything that I am putting to achieve anything that is called an input. So once I submit some data to the system, then it will process with the help of processor. Once the data is processed by the processor, it will achieve the output and the output is saved at the end in a storage device but it may be possible that we can't achieve a proper output that's why we must need a feedback system here the feedback will check whether the output is valid or not that means whether it is appropriate or not according to client request if it is fine then it is stored in storage devices else if it is not appropriate then it will process again so the again processed will also done with the help of processor that's why the feedback is linked with processor directly there are some scenarios where processor must need the control unit because the data in system is in large amount so to control all the data we must need control unit the control unit manage all the data processing whether it is required at the end or an intermediate data intermediate data or the complete data means if i am required some immediate re result but not need at a final level so that is called a intermediate data result and that result is also saved in cache there are some boundary inside a system to cover that boundary we must have to get permitted about the access the whole boundary within all these unit is called as an environment in the environment system is embedded to solve all their required data now the next is element there are some elements of a system these all are that i discussed are the elements so first output and input a major objective of a system is to produce an output that have a value of its user whatever the nature of the output it must be in line with the expectations of the user that means if client requests for anything to the user 
then it must require the user expectation must be fulfilled that's why it is the purpose of control unit or the feedback purpose input are the elements that enter the system for processing output is the outcome of the processing there is one intermediate between input layer and the output layer once the input is putting in the processor the processor will process that input and revert with an output now the next is processor processor is that element of the system which involves the actual transformation of the input into the output it is an operational component of the system it doesn't matter whether the operation is arithmetic binary or any other operation but the whole process will be done within this processor any operation whatever the user required from output it will done in processor end processor changes the input totally or partially completely depend on the requirement next is control unit control element guides the system it is the decision making sub system that control the pattern of the activities governing input processing and output it means the whole process is managed by the control unit it manage whole the system as well as sub system anything within a system is done or not is permitted with the help of this unit after that feedback control in a dynamic system is achieved by the feedback dynamic means run time whenever any system required run time decision then it will done with the help of feedback unit feedback measures output against a standard in some form that includes communication and controls it may be positive or it may be negative it is informational if it is positive then it means it is as per user requirement and if it is negative then we must have to process again to achieve user requirement next is environment what do you mean by environment here it is the source of external element that affect the system it determines how the system must function that means the whole system will functioning in a proper way or not is done with the help of environment after that boundaries and interface a system should be defined by its boundaries the limit that identify its component process and enter relationship when it interface with the other system there is some boundary inside a system here i am taking one example to describe the complete components of the system let us suppose i am teaching you 50 students are there in my class when i am teaching you there is one person came outside the class and that one is that one is a student of my class but it he is already late so it is completely my dependency completely my choice whether i am allowing him or not right and suppose one another person came here and he is the director or hod of my department now this is compulsory for me to allow him or her to come in and inform anyone about anything so this is the boundary and this is the interface the person which is completely dependent on the guide that is the boundary exceed else it is the boundary in i hope it is clear to you next is characteristics of a system there is some characteristics of a system first one is organization it lies the structure or the order it is the 
arrangement of the components that helps to achieve the objective it means how to manage the whole data the hierarchy of a components or a arrangement is done in this field next is interaction it refers to the manner in which each component function are with other components of the system that means whether we have to communicate or not is completely depend on this feature it is an organization purchasing must interact with production advertising with the sale etc it means if i want to teach all of you then i must belong to some organization that's why there is compulsion of the interaction between that organization and me so this is completely depend on interaction next is interdependence it means the part of organization dependent on one another they are coordinated and linked together according to plan one subsystem depend on the input of another subsystem now taking an example let us suppose i am not a permanent employee of this organization if i am a guest like guest tutor then they must have to dependent on me whether i'll come to take a lecture or not so these two are the subsystems one is the organization one is the guest lecturer these both are completely linked together to teach you so the plan is teaching you and two subsystems is one organization and one is the guest lecturer when these two link subsystem then create a single plan that is teaching you next is integration it refers to the completeness of a system it is concerned with how a system is tied together it is more than sharing a physical part or a location that means this is not necessary that we have to share the physical part integration means how a system tied together it means that part of a system work together within a system ever through each part perform their unique function for example in our organization we have five cs faculty so each one is allotted with single subject so these they all have to perform their unique task they all have to teach their unique subject but they all are belonging with single department that is csc department so the integration means does not tied together doesn't mean the physical part or data together sharing next is central objective objective may be real or stated although a stated objective may be the real objective an organization may state one objective and operate to achieve one another there is one for example again i am taking the example of an organization to discuss this particular topic uh, if i am going to uh, a sing an organization for an interview purpose they will ask me to teach all the subjects that i want to teach that i want able to teach even so their objective is to hire someone those who teach ada those who teach any any of the subject so if i am not able to that not able to teach that why they will hire me the central objective is specific but it doesn't mean that subsystem is applicable at each of them right so i am not able to teach them they will not hire me so central objective is fixed it is real it is stated but it doesn't mean the stated objective may be real or not now i hope this is clear to all of you after that there are many types of a processing system firstly first one is batch operating system batch operating system is execution of a series of programs on the computer in some criterias 
a program is also known as job so don't get confused between the set of programs or a jobs these both are the similar thing without human interaction batch jobs are set up so they can run to completion without human interaction so all input data is pre selected through script or command line parameter this is in contrast to online interactive program which promote the user for such input basically what do you mean by batch operating system for example i want to teach 15 student at a time but in my class there are 60 students so is it possible to teach all the 60 students even i not able to teach more than 15 students no then i must make a batch of 15 15 students right these batch act as a single job so now i will teach that particular job at a single time the query have common so i will discuss only about the single job the command line parameters pre selected few scripts are already ready according to that particular job i just give them to them give it to them and they will get back right so this is called batch processing system in this we not need to discuss each a single person with one to one communication there are some advantage of batch processing system these are it allow sharing of a computer resources along many user as i am teaching 15 students so 15 students were sharing the same resources so there are 15 users and resources are single next it shifts time of job processing to when the computer resources are less busy for example i am teaching you at your lecture but you have some doubt you 15 student want to teach want to learn more from me so you will ask me for a free lecture whenever i am less busy i'll tell you that particular time that you will came to my staff room and then i'll teach you this topic so this is completely shift based time it is not mandatory that i'll teach the whole day is it possible to teach anyone a whole day no this is completely shift time we can say time stamp next it avoid human interaction and supervision this is less expensive for example you want to learn so in extra lecture is it mandatory for me to teach you at that particular time no it's completely my choice there is no supervision no extra thing there is just it is just i want to teach you and you want to learn that's why we communicate about the free lecture next is distributive computing it deals with hardware and software system containing more than one processing element and storage element it means it is a concurrent process or multiple program running under a loosely or tightly controlled field that means the whole system is distributed among multiple users and they all are independent to each other in this a program is split into parts that run simultaneously on multiple computers these multiple computers may be placed at geographical different location here i am taking example of distributed computing today the whole system is deal with this particular computing criteria everything is distributed right now for example i am taking again organization there are 60 student in my class i want to take viva but is it possible to take viva of every student at a single time no it's not possible let us suppose you have a two viva today so uh, is it possible to split all the 60 students in 30 30 shift 30 students go for another subject viva and 30 students for another viva so all these 30 students have to wait for that particular shift when they will come for previous viva so completely independent on each other 
each one have to discuss about single topic with one to one communication this is not mandatory to take a geographic location at particular time there are some scenarios when uh, we have to cover the topics with the help of online uh, the live example is lockdown here and today due to lockdown and the and we don't know about what the situation will going further that's why we are taking the video lectures um, so that student can learn from unit 1 to unit 4 about all the subjects so uh, i am sitting at my hometown and you are at your hometown you will be learning with the help of internet so are you there for lecture no you are not at my home place right you are at your place and i am at my place but the access is done with the help of your place as well so this is completely distributed system so to make a word distributed criteria is superb i hope this is clear to all of you if not if you have any query then ask me now about this video there is some key points which you must remember firstly what do you mean by dependency there is interdependency external and dependency so you know about what do you mean by dependency what do you mean by a system concurrent system distributed system their types and what are the basic advantage of both of them uh, one more thing you have to remember is the elements elements are input output processor control unit storage environment and boundaries you must aware about environment and boundaries differentiation boundary is just the outer part of a system but environment is the inside part of a system so this is all about today lecture thank you